All right, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about the differences between the AND 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 Boolean operators, and I'll talk about the difference between the OR and OR OR Boolean operators, uh, but they're basically the same differences. So once I explain the first, you'll pretty much get the second. And I'll also talk about the ALL and ANY functions in R. Now the Boolean operators in the ALL and ANY function are all base R, so you don't need to load any packages for this video. So I'll start off by explaining how uh, the AND 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 operators work. So let's say if you have two groups of people right here, uh, group A and group B, and their weights are written for each person here. And let's say each person in group A is waiting with a person in group B um, to get on a roller coaster. Uh, in the roller coaster, uh, there's a rule that you have to be at least 90 pounds to ride. So to evaluate that, we'd write a Boolean statement like this. Weights is more than or equal to 90 and more than or equal to 90. So how this AND operator here is going to work is it's going to do a pairwise comparison between these two vectors. So to look at the first element of vector A and the first element of vector B, uh, and it'll say, is this above 90? Yes. Is this above 90? Yes. It'll return true. And we'll actually get three answers because there's three elements in each vector. So then I'll move on to the second here. Is this true? Yes. Is this true? No return false, and then is this true yes, is this true yes, so it'll return true. So when we write this Boolean statement here, we're gonna actually get a true false true. It returns three values, but now let's say if we change this here to uh, and and, this works a little bit differently. So what it's gonna do is it, it evaluates the statement from left to right, so it's gonna first look at vector A, and only the first element in vector A it doesn't consider anything past the first element in either vector. So it's going to look at uh, vector A. If this is true, uh, then it's going to move on to evaluating vector or group B. And then it's going to look at the first element in group B. Is 175 above 90? Yes. And it'll return one singular true value because it only looks at the first elements in each vector. The other interesting thing to note is that it only will continue to group B if this came back as true. So it won't bother evaluating group B if this is false, because since it's an AND statement, um, one false makes the whole statement false. Now, OR statements evaluate uh, in a similar way. Obviously, in this case, if this wasn't double OR, um, it would have evaluated both, because both need to be false in order for an OR, or statement to return false. But the double OR works the same way in that it'll only look at the first element in the first vector and then the second uh, and then the first element in the second vector. And the single OR works very similar or the same as the single AND in that it'll say is this or this greater than 90. So in this case if you do a single OR it's going to return all true um, because in this case one of them happens to be greater than 90. So for the most part, you usually don't want to use double AND. In most cases, you're going to want to use a single AND. But there are cases where you would want to use a double AND, and we'll explain that in a second. But first, I'll show you an example of where you really don't want to use double AND. And that's in subsetting. So let's say if you wanted to return the weights in group A that can ride the ride with group B. So we might say something like group A subset, and then we'll put this Boolean statement in the subset. So what this is going to do is return the weights in group A that can ride with group B. So you can see 100 and 120, and that makes sense, right? But now if we put the double AND in the Boolean, or in the subset, we're going to get an interesting result. It ends up returning all of the values, or all the weights in group A. And what's happening here is that this ended up returning true, as we can test here again. And what happens when you subset a variable in R with true, it ends up uh, returning all values within that subset. It recycles true for the length of that variable, and you end up getting all values back. So if you didn't know the difference between and and versus and, and you by accidentally put this uh, within a subset and you got this as a result, you, it, you may not realize that something's wrong with your code and you're not getting the results that you're expecting. Now, if this statement evaluated to false, 
we would end up getting a numeric zero because there's nothing to filter within that subset. Um, and this would probably signal to you that something's wrong within your code and you can look into it more closely. But in cases where this evaluates as true, it could be very tricky to debug. So in subsetting, you really don't ever want to use and and. But there is a case where you may want to use and and. And that's in uh, process control or pro uh, program control of your code. So let's say if you wanted to write an if statement that looked at a certain group, and if they had more than one member in that group, you wanted to print the number of members they have. We can write that here. So we'll do the group B weights. So we'll say if length group B weights is more than one then we're going to want to print then we're going to, want to print the number of people in group B. Okay, so this will return 3 because there's three values in group B. But let's say if we didn't know at this point in the code if the variable was going to exist. So here we don't this group doesn't exist, but let's say if we didn't know that when this code would be evaluated. So since it doesn't exist, when we run it, we're going to get an error. So we can use and and to actually evaluate if this exists before it evaluates this statement here. So we can write and actually in the exist function, you have to put the variable in quotes. So this is saying if this variable exists and the length is more than one, then print the number of people in that group. Uh, but since the and and stops, if the first value is false, it will never even evaluate this statement. So it'll say, does uh, C weight, group C weights exist? Uh, if it doesn't, it just stops right there. So here you'll see that we get nothing back. Um, but if we put values into that variable, and then we rerun the if statement, we'll get back three. So now let's look at if we were evaluating two vectors with a Boolean statement and an if statement without the need for process control. So we can use the example from before, and we can say if this is true, then print, you can ride. But an if statement looks for a singular uh, true or false value. Otherwise, it's not going to run. So you usually, you have to be careful with what kind of operator and how you handle um, your Boolean operations in an if statement. Because if we run this here, we're going to end up getting an error. And that's because this evaluation, like we saw before, is returning three different true-false values. And the if statement here is only looking for one of them. So it doesn't know what to do. If we put an and and into the if statement, we're going to get a you can ride. But I don't usually suggest writing and and within if statements unless you know for sure that each value here is going to be a singular true or false. And maybe you want to write and and for a speed improvement. Um, it's technically a little bit more efficient because with and and it'll evaluate the first statement and if that's false it won't bother evaluating the second statement where and is going to evaluate both either way. So some people write that in if statements to uh, speed up the code a little bit. In cases where you're evaluating two vectors in an if statement, uh, two options you might consider is using uh, the all or any function. So if I write all here, and all here. What this is going to do is it's going to say if all weights in A are above 90 and all weights in B are above 90 then print you can ride. And this is going to return one single true or false and this is going to return one single true or false. And actually here you could probably go ahead and use the double and uh, just because within an all function you know it's only going to return one value on each side and it'll be slightly quicker. So we've run this. It's going to return nothing because, of course, not all values in uh, group A are above 90. Let's say if we change this to 40. 
Oh, it's not group A, it's group B. So if we run that again, of course you can ride. Uh, the other function you might want to consider is called any. And this is really saying if any value within group A is above 40, and if any value within group B is above 40, then print you can ride. And of course, we're going to get you can ride back. And that's all I have for uh, Boolean operators in this video.